In the stocking strategies part one video, I discussed why the inch per gallon rule is misleading, and I talked about how to strategize stocking your saltwater tank with fish. If you missed part one of the stocking strategy series, follow the link up there to watch it. I'm willing to bet that one of the big reasons you got into the saltwater tank hobby was that you saw some of the colorful fish that you could keep in a saltwater tank. If color was part of the hook that got you into the hobby, why not use it to fill out your tank? Saltwater fish come in every color of the rainbow. You can even avoid having certain colors in your tank. True story, a client of mine went to the University of Michigan whose team colors are blue and yellow. His business partner went to Ohio State, team colors red. Both of them have tanks in their shared office, so they have to see each other's tanks all the time. The University of Michigan grad filled his tank up with blue and yellow fish. There is zero red in that tank. The Ohio State alumni filled his tank up with only red fish. There's no rivalry there, I promise. Eating habits. Some fish are really timid eaters. Mandarins are a great example. They have a personal debate before they even take a bite of food. While the mandarin is swimming around having a debate about whether it should eat the food, the big aggressive eaters in your tank will gobble up the food. Timid eaters and aggressive eaters don't blend well. Other fish like leopard wrasses are very athletic and will decimate microfauna such as pods in your tank very quickly. I won't add a leopard wrasse to a new tank for several months as I want the pod population to have a chance to stabilize. I've talked a lot about the pieces of a saltwater tank strategy, so let's put all these pieces together and work up a stocking list on an example tank. The Mega Matrix 120 is a great example tank. Not too large and not too small. Starting with the inch per gallon rule, 120 divided by 3 equals 40, so that means we can have about 40 inches of fish in this tank. I like triggers, which are a big bioload fish, and a pair of blue throat triggers will fit nicely in the Mega Matrix 120. Part of my utility fish, the white-tailed bristletooth tang, is a hard-working algae eater, and it produces a lot of waste. I like the magnificent fox face for its colors and its hard-working algae eating work ethic. Big bioload fish are now handled. Another great utility fish is the pink spot goby. He doesn't sift too much like the orange diamond gobies, so the pink spot made it on the list. The pink spot also hangs out on the sand bed, so I'm double dipping and getting my swimming position category started. I like fish that hang out on the rocks, so the Midas Plenty is on the list too. The Mega Matrix 120 is too small for big tanks like Naso tanks, as well as my beloved Pyramid Butterflies. I also like Spot Breast Angels, but they're too big for this tank. I'll miss all these fish, but they aren't a good match for the Mega Matrix 120. The Bellus Angel is a great match, as it is a reef safe angel that doesn't get very large. Plus, the male has very different color patterns than the female, which is neat to observe and to educate onlookers about. A splash of yellow will add a lot to the tank, and since the Mega Matrix 120 is 48 inches across the front and 24 inches front to back, a yellow tang will have lots of room to comfortably cruise around the tank. Continuing with the color theme, a pair of captive bred Bangai Cardinals with their black bands against a white or silver body is a nice high contrast fish. They also tend to swim in one place in the water column, which is unique for a saltwater fish. The Orchid Dotty Max spends most of its time in the rock work, and its bright color is an eye catcher, so it's on the list. Another rock hugger fish is a yellow assessor. These guys are super unique as they tend to stay in or near the entrances to caves and overhangs. They also swim inverted or upside down. Since the Mega Matrix 120 isn't overly large, some nice fairy wrasses will fit into the mix. The red velvet fairy wrasse fits into the glamour without the bill category, and in my experience, they're too aggressive to mix with more timid flasher wrasses like the yellowfin and the McCosker flasher wrasse. I'll go with the yellowfin as I can get it from Australia, which is known for its sustainable fishery and hand-caught fish. Once the Mega Matrix is fully stocked, I'll add in three Roland's damsels. These guys can get territorial, so I'll make sure they come into a crowded neighborhood versus having free reign in a wide open tank. Here's a recap on the stocking list for the Mega Matrix 120. Of course, any new arrival should be quarantined and conditioned for at least 30 days. That's my basic approach to stocking a saltwater tank. Good luck with your stocking, and of course, quarantine all your fish. Mm -hmm.